everybody. This is Kelly Hornsby, and welcome to our daily devotional from Fellowship Dallas. Um, today, I just want to talk with you a little bit about hope. Um, as we all know, there's uh, times where we have prolonged stress or grief or longing or loss. Um, all of us are feeling that in different ways right now, and um, that leads us to a place where we need hope. And um, you know, I saw people this week looking for hope um, and finding moments of it as they posted pictures of rainbows that they saw after a storm, um, as I even posted some pictures of flowers and the bright green that God's bringing out in the springtime as I went for a walk um, this week. And, you know, as we do this, um, I even get to hear the joy and the hope from uh, people like my niece, who's four, who just shared um, a verse that she's been memorizing from Philippians um, with me um, digitally. And it brings hope um, even to hear her sweet voice quoting the scripture. And um, of course, she's loving this time because she has her parents at home and she's got her brothers at home and thinks it's a great vacation. Um, but you may be at home and you're seeing this as kind of a long race um, ahead. And so as you know, if you were really running a race when you can see the finish line, it absolutely brings you that sense of hope um, because the race is almost done and we don't know when the finish line is gonna be um, for us, but we can be assured um, who has the victory. And so I just wanna comfort you with that this week. Um, in the midst of it though, we, we do find times of weariness, um, possibly even complacency and um, times where Satan uses this to make us feel things and see things uh, that we don't even normally pay attention to. Um, he can use isolation to make us feel lonely. He can um, use the risk of our job uh, being lost to make us feel like we're not that valuable. Um, he can even use little things that we don't even pay attention to most of the time. Um, how many of you have been doing a lot of uh, gathering either on FaceTime or Zoom calls this week and all of a sudden uh, you realize that when you're having a conversation with someone face to face, you don't even notice. But when you're on the call as well with a video, you all of a sudden notice um, what angle your face is at. And if you look like you have wrinkles or if your hair looks like a mess and um, Satan starts to go, huh, well, did you know that you look like this all the time and tell you some things um, that just aren't true about how you're perceived because Satan is a liar. And um, so just want to just want to let us know and remind us that as we are feeling these things or thinking these things, um, that there's hope for us. Like I said, I went on a walk this week and um, in times that I need to remember who God is and what he's all about, um, I usually turn to hymns because that's what I grew up on. Um, and they always speak to me about God. And um, this week as I was walking, I um, heard this, the hymn come on a playlist that I was listening to called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And I just want to read you the words of that hymn. Um, it's one that I learned as a very small child. And um, it says, O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And I love the last verse um, of that hymn as well. It says, his word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. You know, I found out this week that this hymn was written by a woman who was blind. And it made it even more special to me that um, she was telling us. She couldn't see all the things of the world, all these distractions. Um, but she still knew that we need to turn our eyes to Jesus, turn our hearts to him. Um, and in this time, uh, let's do that. You know, he doesn't just look and, and tell us to turn our eyes to him. Um, he reminds us in his word that he turns his eyes to us. He turns his face to us. He turns his um, love to us. And so I want to leave you today with um, one of my favorite verses. It's from the book of Zephaniah. Um, it's in the Old Testament, Zephaniah 317. The book is all about God calling his people back um, from complacency and from turning away from him. And he talks about all of the, the judgment that's coming, but he finishes with hope uh, because he always returns to his people and he um, wants to draw us to himself. He wants to comfort us. And Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord 
Your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So this week, even today, as you're at home, you may be working from home, you may be in a house full of people where it's noisy, let God quiet you with his love. You may feel like you're all alone. Remember that he's rejoicing over you with singing. And no matter what battle you're facing right now, whether it's sickness or your job or your finances or, or just feeling isolated, remember that the Lord your God is with you and he is mighty to save. He quiets you with his love and he rejoices over you with singing. Thank you guys. We love you and we're praying for you.